If you remember this video, I'm doing a thing. Welcome back. And otherwise, welcome to my immersive home studio. Today, I will show and teach you exactly everything you need to know in order to build an immersive home studio like this for yourself on a budget. My name is Matt Flank. Let's get started. Holy shit, it's been over a year. Goddamn. So last year, I set out to build an immersive home studio for myself for three reasons. Number one, I just wanted to be able to listen to immersive music all the time because I just think it is so cool. Number two, for my thesis, I made an album in immersive audio and I wanted to be able to mix it at home. And number three, I saw this as a challenge because there is not much to find about this subject online and I wanted to make a guide for you guys so you can do this as well. So I'll be dividing this video into three categories. Number one, listening and how to actually listen to immersive music because it is not as straightforward as you think. Number two, mixing. This brings in a lot of challenges as well when it comes to choosing your GAW, setting up your speakers and stuff like that. And number three, the hardware. What kind of audio interface you can use, what kind of speakers you can use, everything about hardware. So when it comes to listening to music in Dolby Atmos right now, there is only one accessible way and that is through Apple Music. So I had to switch from Windows to Mac, but that's a whole different video. There is one other way, which is if you have the ADM file, but unless you know the people that make the music, you will not have the ADM file. So let's stick to Apple Music. Okay, so to listen to Dolby Atmos music in Apple Music, you wanna make sure that the song has this Dolby Atmos batch next to it, that when you go into Apple Music settings, go to playback, Dolby Atmos is set to automatic, not to always on, because always on will leave you with binaural audio and even though you have a multi-channel speaker set up, it will play in stereo. Then finally, you wanna to go to audio MIDI setup and make sure that when you select your audio interface or the Dolby Audio Bridge, your speakers are configured correctly. So I have this 512 configured right there, which works for me. And when it comes to the Dolby Audio Bridge, which is what I use for Apple Music, I have also set it to a 512. I could change it to a 712 and let Dolby do the uh, dime mixing, but this works fine for me. Now, when it comes to mixing music in Dolby Atmos, this is a whole different story because not only do you need a DAW that's compatible, you also need some effects that are multi-channel supported. And when you're not running a standard Dolby setup, you also need to be able to downmix, which was and still is to this date my biggest issue. Let's jump into the computer and see what we actually need when it comes to software and mixing in order to make this work. So when it comes to software, the most important thing is your DAW and I decided to go with Studio One. I have tried Nuendo and Cubase as well as Pro Tools. I still think Nuendo and Pro Tools would be the best option if you have money to buy external plugins, but Studio One has all of their built-in plugins multi-channel and that is why I went with Studio One. So let's take a look at how this works. So on the right here, you can see my master bus, which is currently set to a bed of 712 and the output format of 916. But I need to change this to 512 because I'm working with a 412 setup. And then I will just disable my center speaker. So I use the phantom center instead. So when it comes to mixing in Dolby Atmos, we have two options. We can mix in the bed, which we do by using the surround panel which I, by the way, think is absolutely terrible. Let me show you why. By default, a stereo sound looks like this. And when I wanna make it wider, I can, which is great, but it doesn't go beyond 90 degrees or 180 degrees, depending on how you look at it. In order to place my sound at the back, I first have to drag this thing to the bottom and then I can drag it to the back, but now my left and right speaker channel switched. So that is so stupid and I don't know why they are doing this. Then there is the object-based mixing, which is just an object panner. It works great. It does everything it needs to do. But since Studio One doesn't have support for the external Dolby Atmos renderer, and they don't have support for custom speaker formats. Let me open the speaker setup here. I am stuck with bad down mixing. For example, when I pan my object to the ground and directly to my side, I won't hear a thing because I don't have speakers there and Studio One isn't ready to compensate for it. And as you can see, if I open the Dolby Atmos renderer, I have my speaker setup configured right there and this works fine. 
So in order to fix this, all they would need to do is allow me to connect to the Dolby Atmos renderer like Nuendo, Cubase or Pro Tools allow me to do. Or they would have to build in custom speaker configurations or better dynamics options. One of the inconsistencies is, as you can see, in my outputs, the rear speakers are left rear surround and right rear surround. But in the Dolby Atmos renderer, these are the left surround and right surround speakers, which is inconsistent and therefore there is no good way to actually downmix this. So Studio One, if you're watching this, please fix this. It's, I think, not too big of a deal to fix or even to add integration with the Dolby Atmos renderer and it would make my life and probably not many other people's lives way more easy. Before we go to the end of this video, I want to show you why this doesn't work on Windows. And that is because of this simple thing right there, which is there is no option for a Dolby audio bridge or a black hole multi-channel audio bridge or anything like that. So now that we've seen everything when it comes to the software and mixing, it's time to talk about the hardware, which for most people is going to be the hardest part. I actually think I managed to do this in the cheapest way possible, and I will show you exactly how and how much it costs. So for starters, you need a Mac computer. There really is no way around this. You need a multi-channel audio bridge in order to get Dolby Atmos from your DAW to your speakers. And this simply doesn't exist on Windows as of right now. So next up, I would decide what speakers you want to use. I went with Atom T5Vs because those are really affordable. I already had P7Vs and a T10S Sub. So I just had to get a couple more of the T5Vs and I managed to get a discount from Adam Audio, which is so nice of them, thank you very much. So in total, my speakers cost me this much, but you need to add speaker stands and cables, so this gets up to this much. Next up, we need a way to connect all of these speakers to my computer, which is through an audio interface. There is two different ways to approach this. Either you get a cheap audio interface like I did with enough outputs and you're good to go, but this is not optimal because this way I don't have any option for monitor controlling or making a bass management bus. So as of right now, my top and rear speakers are not bass managed, which is a shame. And the other approach is to get an interface with Dolby Atmos or immersive support and a monitor controller built in. But these are more expensive than all my speakers together. So for me, this wasn't worth it. There are a couple pieces of software that claim to do all the bass management and speaker routing stuff, but I haven't really tried those, so I cannot tell you anything more about this. So when it comes to actually building the setup, this is the easiest part. Dolby has a lot of guides and dimensions on their website, depending on what speaker setup you use, how to measure them and how far to place them apart to get an optimal listening position. I followed this and it sounds so good. Even just my stereo, because now I'm sitting at the ideal listening spot, sounds so much better. It feels like I've upgraded my speakers, even though everything I did is put them on a stand in the right position. So to end this video, I want to talk about some downsides of this all. Number one, it is pretty expensive for what you get right now. There is two reasons why I could recommend this, and that is number one, if you're doing this professionally and if you plan on mixing in Dolby Atmos. And number two, if you just really want to listen to music in Dolby Atmos because the experience is crazy, and even for watching movies on Apple TV, this is sick. For example, in a shooting scene, you can hear the bullets fly by and it's crazy. Next up, my biggest issue, and that is the down mixing. I am not using a standard Dolby setup. I am using a 412, meaning I have four speakers around me, so a quad setup with two top speakers and a sub. Dolby recommends a minimum of a 514 or 512, which is what I set my down mix to. But in order to actually mix in Dolby Atmos, I would recommend a minimum of a 712, because there is a lot of inconsistencies when it comes to down mixing from a 7 setup to a 5 speaker setup in surround. Some people told me, why don't you get a center speaker so you at least have a 512? I tried this, but the center speaker actually makes the least difference. I even found it to make my system sound worse, actually. And when it comes to down mixing, almost every DAW or mixer I used has the option to disable the center speaker and use the phantom center instead. However, when it comes to the side speakers, which is the 7 instead of 5, there is no consistent way to down mix this, unless you are using the Dolby Atmos renderer, 
but unfortunately the external Dolby Atmos renderer is not supported in all DAWs. So in Studio One I'm stuck with bad downmixing. What does this mean? When I'm panning an object from the front right to the right rear, when it is in the center of those two speakers it simply disappears for me, which is a shame. And I hope this gets fixed soon. I have been talking to the support of Studio One about this and it seems like they don't have any plans to fix this at all. So when it comes to software, the best way right now would be to use Pro Tools, get a ton of external plugins, which is really expensive and just stick with that. But again, this is going to cost you a lot of money because one, Pro Tools is expensive and two, plugins are expensive as well. And that is why I went with Studio One which for me was the cheapest all round option. And when I'm doing final mixes, I have studios that I have access to, which I can go do my final mixes. Okay, so that's it. That's it for this video. If you have any questions about this, or if you plan on doing this yourself, leave a comment or send me an email and I will get back to you as soon as possible. I'm thinking about getting back into doing some, pl doing some plugin reviews, making some music. I also got an Arturia Polybrute, which I want to make a video about. So if that's something you want to see, make sure to leave a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Matt Flank. Peace out.